1944 was the year Allied forces around the globe definitively turned the tide on the evil forces that had been seemingly left unchecked since Poland was invaded five years before. In the United States, history was also being made in May of that year, when 2,600 delegates from the Polish-American community met in Buffalo, New York, for the founding of the Polish-American Congress. With military victory at last on the horizon, the delegates chose Charles Rosmarek as the organization's first president. Underlining the Polish-American commitment to For Your Freedom and Ours, it selected a pioneer up for the task of advancing Poland's historic demands for freedom and independence. Later that year, on October 11th, President Franklin Roosevelt met with Rosmarek and others from the Polish-American Congress to celebrate Pułaski Day. A dark shadow hovered over the joy of that encounter, as in Warsaw, a brave, patriotic uprising had been obliterated. It was very obvious that nobody was going to help Poland, so we better get together. So they decided to form the Polish-American Congress. And they had the meeting in uh, Detroit, and not in, in Buffalo they had the meeting. And this is where they came together, and they started. They wanted to do two things. What they wanted to do is to come up with a free Poland, and at the same time, in the meantime, to help the Polish people with whatever needs. In 1951, President Harry Truman met with what became the Select Committee to conduct an investigation of the facts, evidence, and circumstances of the Katyn Forest Massacre. Over the following year, the Polish-American Congress urged the U.S. Congress to create this special committee, which proved to be instrumental in exposing the horrific crimes against what in the pre-war period was the cream of Polish meritocracy, finding truth and justice for the victims. Another important day occurred on September 28, 1956, when President Dwight Eisenhower met with Rosmarek to discuss Poland's rapidly changing horizons. In the deep freeze of the Cold War, within weeks of this meeting, Poland's Stalinist regime was displaced by a new system ordered by the Kremlin to limit change and, like the Communist International of old, to put all power in Moscow's hands. After this Soviet-dictated internal transfer of power, the forecasts for Poland were bleak indeed, as our United States sought firm steps to show their support for our homeland citizens. In 1960, President Eisenhower and Senator John F. Kennedy, two World War II heroes, spoke to the assembly in Chicago at the 5th Polish-American Congress Convention. Eisenhower became the first president to address the Polish-American Congress at a meeting, setting an example for future presidents of the importance of cooperation. By 1972, leaders of the Polish-American Congress were meeting with President Richard Nixon to discuss matters during the roundtable meetings that were held to delineate his stance on Polish issues during the presidency. By 1980, extreme political and economic crises under communist mismanagement led to the creation of the Solidarity Movement in Gdańsk, a move that resulted in an immediate Polish-American Congress endorsement of the Union's cause. The following year, President Mazewski met with Solidarity leader Lech Wałęsa, who asked the United States to provide humanitarian assistance for Polish people in need. During the next seven years, the Polish-American Congress Charitable Foundation sent an astonishing 427 tons, $200 million worth of critical aid. President Mazewski also spoke out against the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan in 1982 at a rally in Chicago. In a non-Orwellian 1984, the 40th anniversary of the Warsaw Uprising, President Ronald Reagan met with the Polish-American Congress and reaffirmed his commitment to Polish sovereignty and to the women and men of solidarity. 
He bolstered Polish morale with praise, saying, if there's a lesson to be learned from the history books, it is that Poland may be beaten down, but it is never defeated. It may be forced into submission, but it will never give up. It may be pressured to acquiesce, but it will never accept foreign domination and the suppression of God-given freedom. Three years later, U.S. economic sanctions against Poland were lifted, thanks to a blessed trinity of efforts by the Polish-American Congress, Lech Wałęsa, and Pope John Paul II. In 1994, in response to the increasing discussion in Washington, D.C., on possible expansion of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the PAC, then under the leadership of President Edward Moskal, was one of the key initiators and founders of the Central and Eastern European Coalition, an informal association of 18 ethnic organizations committed to the promotion of key concerns shared by Americans who trace their heritage to that region. In order to get into NATO, there are certain conditions you have to meet. We have to talk to the people in NATO, and they have to come up with certain conditions to give us the path to it. There was no path to it. Uh, we had to start pushing for it. So there was one of the first steps was the partnership for peace, which is the big thing that uh, uh, President, uh, President uh, Clinton and his uh, Secretary of State thought that this is the solution. Let's establish partners here for peace, and this will give the feeling of safe, safety, security for Poland and the rest of the countries. And we said, hell no, we're not pleased with that. And the hell no came in 93 when we formed the CEC just before Clinton went to, to, uh, to Brussels. Then, on May 21, 1998, Poland was given yet another major reason to rejoice. President Bill Clinton signed the NATO Enlargement Pact that admitted Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic into the Strategic Transatlantic Alliance. So what lies ahead? The Polish-American Congress pledges that it will remain ardently committed to its mission by promoting matters close to Polish-American hearts, working to foster appreciation for Polish culture, and educating leaders and the general populace about Polonia. Although now mostly focused on the betterment of American Polonia, the Polish-American Congress remains uniquely placed to work both with the governments of Poland and the United States. On the one hand, the PAC supports Poland as an ally, while keeping a watchful eye that the most fundamental human rights remain strong and available to every citizen of Poland. On the other, the organization supports strong partnerships between Poland and the United States in political, military, scientific, and cultural arenas, something that for decades has been and will continue to be at the very core of the organization's mission and activities. The Polish-American community today is estimated to be more than 10 million strong. Speaking together for the Commonwealth, it has a very powerful voice resonating loudly in the chambers of elected legislators. For the last seven decades, the Polish-American Congress has been making sure that the voice of the Polish-American community is heard and its concerns and dreams acted upon. The organization plans to continue its work for the next 70 years, and hopefully many more, confronting and resolving challenges and adapting to new realities. As always, it remains on the forefront as a dedicated defender, a clear and strong voice, and zealous promoter of the causes of the Polish-American community. As the Polish American Congress celebrates its 70th anniversary, I am so proud to be its current president. Because so much has been accomplished over the 70 years, and there is so much more that has to be accomplished. And I, I strongly believe by working united as one group, we can do so much more as a Polish American community here in the United States as well as the entire 